if you are listening to this podcast, then you must really be a loyal listener. You want to know why? Because I have not recorded an episode in like three and a half weeks. So I'm sitting at work day before yesterday. Wait, today's Wednesday. I'm sitting at work Monday and I'm just like, what could episode 26 be about? And I was just like, shit, well, I have to update them on everything that I've been doing. So I was like, wait, where's Eve though? Like, do you guys remember the British cartoon or like book? It was like Optical Illusion, Where's Waldo? I used to love Where's Waldo. So I was just like, shit, why not? Episode 26, Where's Eve though? And that's though, like T-H-O-U-G-H. Episode 26, Where's Eve though? Thanks for tuning in. This is Eve Davis Paul, and you are listening to Faith Pusher. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Vanquisher the Podcast. Of course, I am Eve, Eve Davis Paul. Um, it's been a few weeks since I've talked to y'all. Y'all know y'all my family, and I have been straight nose to the grind. Um, schooling has been kicking my ass. There are some good things happening in my life. And I had a birthday. So I'm 26 years old. I do feel different. I can't even lie and say, hey, I feel the same. I actually do feel different. Uh, One thing that I do notice is that, I believe on our last episode, if you have not heard episode 25, stop this shit. Go to episode 25. Listen, because if I continue at this point and y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about, you're going to be like, what? So. Episode 25, I mentioned, you know, my birthday was coming up. I mentioned that 25 is the age of curiosity. So there was a lot of curiosity in my year of being 25 years old. I'm 26. I feel like I have completely shedded that curiosity, which for me looks like not wondering what Wendell is doing, not wondering if Wendell is okay. Like, Literally, I have come into some new, just new, new, just new shit, like just new shit. Now, if you don't know who the fuck Wendell is, you should not be listening to this episode. Okay. I've had people messaging me on Twitter. Who is Wendell? Who is that? They're so excited to listen to the podcast that they have not gone back to catch up. Um, Please go back. And listen, I will not give you podcast cheat hints. We're not doing that. No. Um, but yeah, September the 13th, I turned 26 years old. Um, and I literally woke up that day. I was like, you know what? I got a new hairstyle or new haircut. Um, and it just feels like I am really walking into and walking towards my purpose. Now, a lot of people will say, well, shit, I want to walk towards my purpose. I want to know what I'm doing. The first thing you got to know is what you want. Um, I knew that I did not want to go into 26 years on this earth, still worrying about somebody that is not worrying about me genuinely. Like it's different. Somebody's just like, hey, I love you. What you doing? What you up to? How are you? All of those things. But the parentification, uh, which is where our mothers make us the the parents that shit it gets old i don't want to continue to care for nobody i have shed it so much skin i have turned over so many new leaves i've turned over shit i've turned over new boulders fuck like a new rock i've turned over new boulders and i will continue to lead the way and guide the way what i can tell you guys is that it is possible to become free to live freely to have family to have love to have marriage to have healthy relationships with your children be those kids babies toddlers teenagers adults it is more than possible now do y'all want to hear about my birthday because when i say it was a party best birthday hands down ever Now, I'm not going to say that like some shit didn't happen, but I did not get a call from Wendell. 
Well, no, I actually did, but see, she calls from these unknown numbers, and it's like, if you come up on my caller ID and I don't know you, I'm not going to answer, so, like, cut the shenanigans. So, I mean, if you counted like that, I didn't get a call from her, which I'm glad about. Now, if you go back again, episode 25, you will know that she sent me an edible arrangement, and I got it sent to my neighbor's house and she loved it like y'all her and her husband are doing this diet she loved it and it was completely by surprise she has made cakes for my birthday my wife's birthday our daughter's birthday like she's made treats and given us uh, Christmas gifts and gift cards and to be able to give her that at a time where she wasn't expecting it was like was like for me perfect um, she is getting older. So I think that it was just like, wow, like somebody thought of us, you know, and since they're doing the diet, the fruit was just perfect. There was no chocolate. So, you know, it was just perfect all around. Perfect. It's so funny how we can take what people want to continue to make themselves be in control of and turn it into a good thing. Like literally took that and turned it around and was able to bless somebody else with it. When it was being sent to my house and wasn't even supposed to by law, y'all, like lawfully. So, yeah, bless somebody if you get a chance to, Um, especially at the hands of somebody that treated you wrong. If you can just, you know what? It's just like, I don't have time to be out here worried about you. Like, I don't have time to be out here worried about you, mom. Like, now I can say it and it means not a whole lot. Because also, if you've listened to previous episodes, you know that biological parents were removed, adopted parents were placed back into my life. So that has been going amazing. But back to my birthday. So I wanted to go to a piano bar. Um, My wife set up the whole thing, got us, you know, nice hotel. Everything was so expensive and cool and fun. And it was supposed to be a party of seven, including my wife and I. It ended up being a party of four, but for for good reason. Um, One of our friends had an emergency that she was able to tell us about, which ended up being a blessing, ironically. And then two others that we um, were associated with at that time couldn't make it. Now, I have looked at this differently at this point. Because I know, and y'all know I'm not like super like churchy or holier than thou or like beating anybody over the head with a Bible, but I do believe that God is in all things. So period. I believe that God brought someone into my life um, earlier this year because I had sort of lost all faith in having a healthy marital relationship. So I was able to meet uh, a young guy. Actually, he's older than me by four years I was able to meet him and it was just like wow like brotherhood kind of connection you know you guys know I'm not like feminine so he looks at me as his bro I looked at him as my bro that's how it worked and it's just been really great now sometimes we believe that people are supposed to go where we're going sometimes we believe that you know things are supposed to be permanent I'm here to tell you that they're not On this healing journey, there may be people that pop into your life and something may happen where it's revealed to you that they are not supposed to be there. Um, And the crazy thing is, I know that I've always been emotionally attached when I had connections with people, especially people that I looked at as like family. Um, And... I notice now that there's no situation where I'm going to be abused, misused, used, anything. So needless to say, those two other friends that we invited could make it. And just last week, I had to let this friend that came in and acted as a brother in that moment um, or that I saw as a brother in that moment, um, I had to let him go. and. Guys, when I say that it hurt in the moment, it really, really did hurt to say, you know what? This is not what this is supposed to be. This is not how it is supposed to feel. And if you do not want to be accountable for your actions in my life, 
I have to walk away. It hurt like hell. But this is what I want to tell y'all. And this is a message. This is a message. So listen closely. This young man was used as a vessel to restore hope and to restore faith in my friendships with males in my life. In letting him go, because I only knew him since March, in letting him go, and when I say go, I mean blocked, unfriended, everything. I'm at a point in life where I know how I need to be treated, how I deserve to be treated. And I treat people in a way that you would think that people would respect, but there's no hesitation now. If you don't respect it, okay, good. God bless you. Keep it moving. Goodbye. Some people may say, wow, that's really harsh. It's not harsh when those that are in your life want to be in your life and they want to grow. It's not harsh. You're telling somebody, hey, I don't really like the way this went. I don't like how you did this. And instead of say, you know what? Yeah, you're right. And we can deal with it here. They want to continue to rant and stomp and rave and and all of this extra stuff. It's like, no, I don't think so. And you know what? Any other time before the age of 26, I would have felt guilty. I would have been unsure. I actually would have been curious to know what could happen after this point, after somebody talks to you so nastily, so disrespectful? Um, what could happen after this? I wouldn't even think that, OK, first of all, no one is supposed to talk to you this way. No one is supposed to disrespect you, call you out your name, even if they are mad. So what? Who cares? If you being mad doesn't matter, why should they be a mad matter to you? So the message again. Sometimes situations, people, opportunities, they are placed strategically in our life to act as a vessel, whether it be a vessel to heal, whether it be a vessel for communication, whether it be a vessel just to be able to see who you are, to see what you are capable of. We have to continue to pay attention. We have to continue to keep our eyes open and our ears open so that we aren't repeating the same things in our everyday relationships, the same habits, the same norms that we've been accustomed and adjusted and comfortable in because of the way that our moms have treated us. But anyways, that was only a portion of my birthday. Um, so we did go to the piano bar. Um, it's actually a dual piano bar. So two pianos on the stage and the band that plays on the stage takes song requests with tips. Um, and people were just, I mean, request after request and you sing and whoever requests a song has to come on stage, whoever the song is for people were celebrating retirement, um, double digit, like birthdays over 50, over 60, and the I was with my wife and two of our good friends. And if nobody knows, Golden Girls is my most favorite show ever. And it's still like the best show ever. Um, So I'm sitting there. I'm enjoying the food. They have vegan options there, which were amazing. Shout out to Bobby McKee's and their vegan wings or the vegetarian vegetarian wings no wait yeah no vegetarian wings and the fries were so good so if anybody knows me before I uh, transition from not eating meat wings and fries favorite meal ever wings fries and fruit punch oh my gosh the wings that I had on my birthday were so good and to know that no animals were harmed during the creation of that food was even better had some drinks. I was feeling good. Um, I got the Golden Girls Funko Pops. They're little statues for people who are just like, what the fuck is a Funko Pop? They're little statues of the actual figures from the show. And a lot of people like collect them. They're almost like action figures, but just a fresher way of saying action figure. Um, And then I also got the Clue board game, but Golden Girls edition. So my friends, obviously, know me and I'm super grateful for the people that did show up for me um 
this birthday was by far the most epic, the most amazing. I dig it on the stage because the piano player said, oh, we usually don't get TV shows. Before he could even finish his statement, I was right by the stage. We got like front of the house seats, which were amazing. I was already up on the stage, jumping up and down like a freaking maniac. I mean, I literally that night was the epitome of somebody who was isolated their entire childhood. The shit is, it's fucking sad to say, but it is really hilarious. Somebody that was isolated their entire fucking childhood did not do any partying in their early 20s. Like, literally, just you would have thought that I either didn't take my meds or I was having a seizure standing up. It was just bad. Either way, from the audience's point of view, because <laughs> I did get to see the video, geez, my wife said that it just looked like I was completely free and enjoying myself. And it's something that she had never seen before. Luckily, I don't take meds because I had a good amount of alcohol that night. Super fucking fun. Um, It was just an amazing time. And I felt like I was restarting life all over again and things were new and I was able to walk into my own body. It was really amazing, guys. Um, The night ended just just wonderfully. It was amazing. Um, Now. There are some things that I want to tell you that I'm I'm very excited for. Um, it doesn't really have anything to necessarily do with the podcast, but it does have something to do with um, me. So, of course, I'm going to share it with y'all. Um, I was offered an opportunity to have my own syndicated online radio show. Now, of course, at first I was just like, well... Maybe I should just take the podcast as an online radio show, you know, just take all the episodes and put it there. But then I was like, there's so many things that I really want to talk about that I cannot talk about here that I feel that not only you, you all would listen to, but I feel that it would just give me a bigger platform, more exposure, which in turn will give this podcast a platform and more exposure. So It is safe to say that I will have my own online syndicated radio show. Um, I will keep you guys updated on when that is coming. I'm super excited for it. Uh, Super, super huge opportunity for me. And I will be able to discuss all things that I would want to and also be able to play music. So um, that's been a dream of mine to have my own radio show where I'm able to play music. And that dream came true. So I do, again, another message want to let you know. That when you want something enough in your heart and you begin to say, I'm going to go forward and I'm going to claim that this is mine. One, it's easier to shed all the toxic situations in your life when you are chasing something that has meaning, that has purpose. And two, the universe literally cannot say no to you, but you got to be sure. It's like, do I really want to go through this door or not? The door will eventually close. But when you're sure and you're just like, look, I'm going through this door, the door will stay open long enough just for you to get on the other side. Um, Now, with my class, oh, my gosh, y'all. This is week six. Each class is eight weeks. This class has been kicking my ass. Like, and trust me, when I say that I am not exaggerating, I have not had any weekends to myself. I am happy to say that I'm currently um, holding an A in the class, and I did pass my last class with an A, but this class is much more demanding. There's a lot of papers um, that are required, and then also there's a lot of discussion. So some of my tests can be up to six hours. Some of them are four hours. Um, Midterm grades, got an A. Everything is going great, but it's taken a lot of my time and a lot of my focus And moving forward, I do want to be able to monetize this podcast. Um, But I know that right now where my money is going is directly to my education. So that's going to always be like super priority to me. Listen, with that being said, um, guys, it is super hard to have a hobby that requires your time weekly, especially when you're going to school working nine to five um it really is it can become something that's like the plate is getting full here 
with this online radio show, I'm just like, you know, if people aren't engaged enough, will I continue to do the podcast? If I don't know that people are there, will I continue to do the podcast? For the people that have been communicating with me on social media, for the people that have been requesting the blog site on our website, I appreciate you. I applaud you. You guys do not know how difficult it is to keep this thing going some days. It's just like, okay, if I can go over here to this online radio show and begin making money with this, where does the podcast come in? Um, Now, of course, this podcast is helping so many people. This podcast is helping me. Do I want for people to know more about narcissistic abuse, maternal narcissism, and for them to know that not only is this disorder something that is lurking in the shadows and people deal with it every day at work, at home, um, it is literally, it's dealt with on so many different levels and a lot of people don't know what to call it, but so many people know what it is. They know what it feels like. Do I want this to be something that people know more about? I do. Do I need your help? I do. I need you guys to share this podcast. I need you guys to to tweet me. I need you guys to talk in the blog. Please leave me a review. If you are listening to episode 26 and you have not left me a review, come on. That's the only way right now you can show me that you really do have something to say about this podcast, because if not, it's like crickets out there. Right now, I have 54 reviews um in itunes if you're not listening via itunes please head over to our facebook page vanquisher the podcast on facebook if you do not use facebook please head over to our website you can leave a review on our first page oh have something new here so a few people were just like hey it would really be cool if we could call in and leave you a voicemail of course I love voicemails. I thought this was like the best thing ever. If you want to call and leave me a voicemail, y'all know I got y'all. I was like, let me just set something up real quick because it's just easier. If it's, if, if it's easier for you to do that, okay, Dallas number 202-688-8070. That's again, 202-688-8070. You can also text that number. So if it's like, hey, don't really want to leave a voicemail, but I do want to send you a text message, send me a text message. You never know that phone may be ringing and I may just decide to answer it and say, hello, this is Eve. So trust me, um, I am going to be giving some callers a call back. I am going to be texting back every single person that texts this number. I love and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Um, I don't ever want you to think, oh, she's just not caring about us. It really isn't that. My life has taken such a turn. It's super full. Um, I want to continue to be focused with where I want this podcast to go. I also want to continue to have a plan. It's like, if I don't have a plan, I don't just want to come on here and talk to y'all. Although it's like, yeah, Eve, we want you to come on here and talk to us. I get it. I really do get it. But I want to continue bringing you guys content that you can value. Um, So many things has happened since I last spoke with y'all. Today, I had an interview at my job for a permanent position. Um, The interview went amazing. Like, the interview went amazing. It was amazing. Interviews, for some reason, always give me confidence because I get so fucking nervous. Oh my gosh, I get so nervous. And it's usually like, yo, why are you getting nervous? Just be yourself. Be relaxed, you know? Speak from what you know. Today, I learned to look at an interview as an opportunity to get further to where you want to go. Um, I love working where I work. I appreciate the atmosphere and the environment and to be able to be there um, permanently. It's a lot of stress going on in my life, y'all. But to be able to have the opportunity to be there permanently, um, to be able to receive benefits is something that I do need and I would like the opportunity to have. So. Hopefully I'll know something back by the end of this week or by Monday about whether I got the job or not. But I do want to let you guys know if anybody is unemployed, if anybody is, you know, hopping from interview to interview, trying to find something new. What I can let you know is that what is for you is for you. It's not going to be nothing 
that's not for you that you get. Okay, it's not going to be nothing that's not for you that you get unless it's like some bullshit, you know what I'm saying? But anything that's a value that you receive, it's meant only for you. That's why you got it. So I was like, yeah, co-worker mom was like, are you nervous? I was like, I am nervous. And then I was like, well, wait, I'm really not nervous. What's for me is for me. I have to remember that. I have to remember that. I also have to remember that it's like, well, if this doesn't work out, you just formulate another plan. That's it. No hard feelings. You know, I was able to have the opportunity to have the interview. I thought about the people that didn't even get that. Like, there's always a different spin to put on stuff. And I'm learning every single day that I am the creator. Again, I'm the creator. You're the creator. We have the brush. We hold the pen. We hold the the uh, paint palette we hold the the key to the locks we hold the key to communication we really do hold the steering wheel to this vehicle and I want to let y'all know that you know I haven't been gone I've been grinding I've been staying up late late nights early mornings with coffee I have been really trying to make a space and make a way and carve out a path for this podcast to be shoved to the front Because I know that this abuse affects so many more people than we even shit probably can fucking realize. So I want to tell you, if you are listening, I love you. I appreciate you for taking uh, time to listen to episode 26. Where's Eve, though? I might actually try to pick up a Where's Waldo book. They got to have them on Amazon. That would be so fun. Um, Listen, follow us on Instagram at VangPod, V-A-N-Q-P-O-D. Follow us on Twitter, V-A-N-Q-P-O-D. If you want to email me, I do answer emails. I answer emails. I answer emails. I answer, literally, I answer emails. I answer text messages. And I might answer your phone number if you call. Eve at VangPod.com. Again, you can find us on Facebook, VanquisherThePodcast.com. And our lovely website, go on over, leave us a review, uh, join our closed forum there, bankpod.com. That's V-A-N-Q-P-O-D dot C-O-M. Hey, much love. I can't wait to speak to y'all next week. Peace.